you know, success varies per person, the level of success. But it's just showing you that consistent content really does do do a lot for your business. Whether that consistent content is on YouTube, whether it's on, you know, podcasts, whether it's Instagram, whatever it may be, choose your poison and go hard. You know, it's just that stuff. You're listening to the Black to Business Podcast, an educational podcast providing Black entrepreneurs with the tools and resources to start and grow their businesses. We chat with vetted Black entrepreneurs, thought leaders, and business owners as they provide tips and resources to help take your business to the next level. I'm your host, Monique T. Marshall. Today, we're discussing technology, innovation, and diversity in business. Technology continues to change, and with new developments and trends, as businesses, we have to keep up with the train. Adamantly, it may seem like we aren't on the right path when it comes to conflicting moments, and you sometimes question everything that you're doing. Believe me when I say this, you are not alone. In today's episode, we unpack all things tech-related. Now, I'm not talking about breaking down Silicon Valley and its giants, but rather how you as a small business can use the ever-changing face of technology to scale and reposition your business for success. I guess today digs deep into how audio and visual media can be used to explore untapped markets, the importance of inclusivity and diversity in technology, and how we as businesses can make use of these platforms to define our target audience and ultimately grow our businesses creatively. In conversation today, we have Anthony Frazier, founder and CEO of ABF Creative, which is America's first and only AI-driven multicultural podcast production company. Let's dive into it. So, Anthony, welcome to the Black to Business podcast. I know this isn't our first time um, having you on the platform or working with us. So I'm excited to get into a one on one conversation. So welcome to the Black to Business podcast. It's it's great to finally be on here. Um, I know we probably tried to make something happen a while ago and just the stars didn't align, but I'm happy um, I'm able to, you know, join your platform. And then congratulations to you for you know, uh, still kicking and still growing and, and, and grow and nurturing this platform for black blacks and tech and business. And I think it's so important. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely. So I know you have done a lot of things and I'm excited about today's conversation just about, you know, media, the creative economy, diversity and technology and all of those things. So first, before we get into that, Tell people about Anthony, who you are, where you, where is it that you do in your business, and how did you get where you are? Um, well, Anthony Frazier, um, I'm a CEO of ABF Created. Um, previously, I've been a tech entrepreneur for ten plus years, uh, and you know, mostly as an ecosystem builder. You know, um, I started out, you know, with my own company uh, called Played, which is like a, a gaming app, and then moved on to uh, a media, um, I would say an events company called The Fat Startup, which a lot of people kind of know me from in our past, but we did events like Tech 8 Away all over the country. And now today, um, fast forward, I am now the CEO of ABM Creative, which is a data-driven podcast company, and we leverage machine learning technology, um, really just to make sure we're making podcasts for uh, specific audiences, people of color, multicultural audiences. And so uh, we're really excited about that. We won our first Webby Award this year. And really, really excited about where we're going as a company. And so that's what I'm doing today. Yeah, I saw that. Congratulations on the award, too. That is major. Thank you. You've been you've been at this. So I want to talk about the beginning and just about mm-hmm. getting where you are today. So you started in, of course, you know, the technology space and you've been in, like you mentioned, for 10 years and it's not slowing down. So I want to talk about your thoughts on the role that technology plays in business and why you think it's important and it's not going to. I mean, technology is business <laughs> and and media is business. Like right now, all of these things are, 
I would say that the great, the line has been blurred. Uh, and so whether you're building a business on Main Street or Wall Street, you have to be tech enabled and you have to be media centric. Uh, that is not an uh, option. That is a necessity if you want to find customers, if you want to grow, if you want to scale. Um, it's a necessity. And so um, those lines are blurred um, completely. And that's something that I've noticed. And that's the reason why even as I build a, a podcast company today, we are a tech company. <laughs> so a lot of people, you know, back then, maybe two, three years ago, maybe even five years ago, we would have been a full on media company. But no, we're a media and tech hybrid. And so, yeah, those lines are completely blurred today. I totally agree. And when you mentioned the fat startup, like that's where I know you from. I actually mm-hmm. attended one of the events a while ago um, when you were first starting. and. Right. One of the things I do admire about what you're doing, and you talked about what ABF is doing in terms of multicultural and like diversity, diversity is the relatability of your platforms. Like when you talk about like the fat startup, I think that was a lot to do with hip hop or right. just like the influence, which I think is important. Um, why do you think? especially when it comes to talking about black entrepreneurs and black businesses, some people shy away from who they are. So why do you think inclusion and being diverse in those aspects matter and kind of what, what led you to go? Um, I mean, for me, it's, you know, diversity is not a, it's not a, um, it's not a charity. It's good business. Right. You know, and I think a lot of the times the way it's framed is framed this, oh, well, let's go help the black people out since everybody's ignoring them or Let, let's go help. But if you look at the stats and the statistics, we're, we're trillions, we're, we have a multi-trillion dollar spending power, um, three trillion and probably more than three trillion at this point. Um, we're over consuming in multiple categories, especially in entertainment you're not doing things for charity. You're doing things because it's good business. You know, multicultural spending is going to be in the billions. Like this is just good business. And I think <clears throat> the bias that, you know, the mainstream media or mainstream business um, thought leaders have is that we're, that they're doing a charity for us. Um so that disadvantage is actually my advantage. And as long as they stay ignorant, I'll stay successful. Um, and, and being able to tap into this huge audience, this huge wealth of stories to tell. Um, we knew that back when it was when we were doing Fat Startup, that this was larger than just, you know, what people thought. We knew that hip hop was a universally um, accepted culture that many people, not just people of color, but just many people from all walks of life will be able to connect to and relate to. Uh, and so when I'm doing ABF Creative today, I'm taking on that same um, notion and that same assumption, which is everyone, even though we're focused on you know multicultural stories and multicultural um, themes, everyone's going to be able to, to relate to these things because it's universal. It's across the board um, and it's profitable. It's not just these things. It's not just, hey, let's, let's, let's pay attention to the ignored stories. But no, let's, t- let's pay attention to this untapped um, you know, market. Love that. And I can totally relate when I think about, you know, starting black to business. I was very heavily influenced by just like hip hop or music. And I thought there is so much influence there. Like if we can use these people who are influencing to influence people to start businesses, I think that there's something there. So, yes, I agree definitely in what you're saying. Um, people think it's an untapped market, but you're like you said, you're you're making that money. You're making that impact. Um, Right. for this specific audience. Love it. And <clears throat> that is, that truly takes, I think, courage to stand behind that because like you said, you've been doing this for 10 years. Uh, what do you think that that comes from for those who are listening if they're trying to go the unbeaten path? You said, where, where, where do I think that comes from? Yes, that courage. That um, 
I just think it really, I've always had it. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Like I've always had it, you know, um, sometimes it's, you know, I think you can learn it and it can become, you know, something that you grow into. So I'm not saying always had it. Like I have some kind of special energy that I tapped into that nobody else can, you know, plenty of people have and plenty of people will continue to, but I just think it was something that I've always had. Um, cause I always had a yearning to solve problems, always had a yearning to create impact. And to me, this just, this is what God led me, you know, this is just what God led me, you know, um, I, I feel like I could have gotten many directions in my career. And I feel like I'm talented enough to, to do as many things as I wanted to do. Uh, but I just feel like God has really, you know, drove me to, you know, really just shining a light on, you know, the underserved and the unheard and, uh, you know, and, and the underrepresented. And that has been the theme of my career. And I don't think, I'll ever do anything else. You know, I'll, I'll always be in different industries. If I build this business out and we sell it for a hundred million dollars, which we will, um, <laughs> I'll still tap into the underrepresented, the underserved and the unheard. It's always going to happen. It's always going to be that way. Trog Spike, love that. Claiming the selling of a hundred million of it. <laughs> Maybe more than that too. <laughs> right, right. I, I hear it. And um, speaking about, you know, always tapping into those things, um, you mentioned what ABF is ABF Creative is doing. So I want to dive into what is ABF and some of the things that you all are doing when it comes to the media, podcasting, and just the creative economy. So how does it work and what are you all doing? Um, what we're doing is, you know, we're we're telling stories. You know, I think with ABF Creative, what makes us there's two things that make us different from every other podcast production company out there. Number one, we're telling the stories, like I mentioned earlier, from the underrepresented, the untapped, and unheard, right? And you know, and that's mostly come from multicultural, you know, sources and resources. So we're we're really telling these these narrative driven stories. We're not just having conversations. And don't get me wrong, when you go to ABF Creative, you're gonna find those conversational interview based podcasts where they just talk about what the happenings are. But what you're also going to get from us is high end storytelling, you know, narrative based storytelling. And I can't wait for you guys to hear this. Like we want to make movies on the ears. You know, we want to tell stories that make that transforms you and puts you in a world in a, in a universe that, you know, the same way a television show does. And so you're going to get that kind of storytelling from us. And we're, we're working with some interesting partners to bring that to life. Uh, the other thing that you're going to get from us is the technology stack. We're not just a production company that's producing podcasts that we think is dope and then we're moving on. No, we're actually tapping into machine learning and artificial intelligence to really find out if we can, are we making content that specifically really relates to this audience? Um, and then we also have a production framework that we call the story time framework that we developed in house that allows us to produce this high end podcast at a faster rate um, than what you would get from normally from a lot of these larger studios. So we're, we're, Innovating in so many different ways, um, the art of podcast creation. <laughs> uh, this is something that we don't see a lot of people doing, and so we're tapping into that. So, it, and we're using multicultural stories as our as our influence to do so. I love it, and you know, I have to ask because I love podcasts. I love listening to podcasts, um, but there is always this thing out there about um, the state of podcasting versus video. <laughs> so let's talk about that because I know people who are listening. We got to get these weekly content. Right. So, what are your takes on podcasting versus video, like YouTube? And um, I mean, like I said, it all it all really goes back to. Um, if you're sitting down and, you know, Joe Button style and you're, you guys are discussing 
the latest happenings in the world. In my opinion, it shouldn't really be any excuse why you shouldn't have a video component to go along with it. They're, you're going to gain a lot of fans from YouTube who would only like to enjoy the podcast uh, in that in that format, um, as well as people who like the audio. Uh, but if you really look at the trends, right? Mm-hmm. If you look at the, the companies that are getting acquired, the podcast networks that are getting acquired, um, the shows that are getting acquired, with the exception of um, Joe Rogan, uh, these are all audio first companies. So they know they have a skill set that they developed in storytelling through audio, not through video, through audio. They developed the skill set. Spotify is not buying companies for video. Mm. Spotify is an audio company. iHeartMedia is not buying podcasts for video. You know what I'm saying? Um, Audible is not buying podcasts and, and acquiring content for video. They're audio companies. These are audio companies. And so if you don't know how to tell a story with audio, then you have no value. You know, even if you have video, you have no value to any of these companies. You have to find a way to monetize some other way, which many people have found very lucrative ways to do so. Um, but that's not a scalable um, way to build the way we're building. Um, and so audio still has a lot of value. And audio is growing. You know, video is going to continue to grow, of course, but audio is growing too. And I think sometimes people think one is interchangeable for the other. And I remember even early in my business, one guy was like, yo, man, you should just be doing video, add video. I'm like, well, if I did that, what makes me special? Mm-hmm. What makes what makes ABF special? If I start doing, I'm just a media company now. I'm just out here doing videos, and the, I'm not here to be typical. I'm not here to be typical, and neither are the people that work with me. Neither are the team members. Neither is my my co founders my my leading team. Nobody's here to be. We're not here to be typical. We're here to really make something groundbreaking, really tell groundbreaking stories. And that's the reason why we are where we are um, today. That's the reason why we're surviving. That's the reason why we're, we're thriving, not surviving, but thriving. You know, we just signed one of our largest contracts ever uh, a few weeks ago um, that just really just confirms uh, everything that I'm saying right now. So find your specialty, find your advantage, and, and go in on it. Don't don't let anybody make you unspecial. You know, find out what makes you special, and double down on it. Love that, and Anthony. I want to because our audience is certainly you know business owners uh, who are making these decisions, the best decisions for their business, um, and they are considering you know going this route of audio. Can we talk about the benefits um, that? audio visual or audio technology can be used for business? Um, well, every company is a media company. Just like we mentioned earlier, how the lines are blurred and every company is somewhat of a tech company today. Well, every company is definitely a media company today. And whether you have a, a barbershop <laughs> or you make websites. <laughs> you should be utilizing podcasts or YouTube to create media that attracts customers to your your pipeline. It's, a, it's that simple. Like I don't I don't have any other way to explain it. And consistent content is the best commercial you will ever have. Consistent content is the best commercial you will ever have. You know, um, you can literally build. I, I remember looking at a story from a plumber who started a YouTube channel um, and he was giving tips to other plumbers. I forgot his name, uh, but he was giving tips to other plumbers and his YouTube channel blew up so much that people. Regular people who would go online and say, hey, I want to look for. Um, you know, a way to do this or a way to do that. His channel would come up and it just created so much free business for him to the point where like he doesn't even do plumbing anymore um, as he, because he, he's been able to hire 
people for, you know, to do all the plumbing for him. And he just focuses on the media. Yeah. Uh, so it's, I'm just saying, I'm not saying you'll have that. Of course, you know, success varies per person, the level of success, but it's just showing you that consistent content really does do, do a lot for your business. Whether that consistent content is on YouTube, whether it's on, you know, podcasts, whether it's Instagram, whatever it may be, choose your poison and go hard. You know, it's just that simple. I was over here like, yes, yes, but I couldn't say anything because it was like, I want this to be a snippet part because that is just such a gem. And I feel like you hit the nail on the head in consistency because when I think about that, it's what really in that plumber is like, that's what really establishes people as that expert and that go to which we want people to understand is, you know, it's a, it might be a longer road for some than others, but it's like, when you're, like you said, consistent, you're establishing yourself as that expert and that go-to and that's what they know you for. So right. whether it be video or audio. Exactly. But I'm over here like, yes, yes. <laughs> um, but I want to talk about also get a little nerdy for a little bit. You also mentioned how ABF Creative is using a guy. And I want to talk about that process because to me, that seems like you are really nailing down on getting to know your consumers and your right. audience. So I want to talk about what AI is and then why is that important for you to have those processes? And I think people can learn how much it matters to nail in on your audience and know everything you can. Right, 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 right. So artificial intelligence, I mean, that's such a broad, you know, term. Um, But if I had to make sense of it, I mean, AI is just like a fake human. That's it. (laughs) Like it's a computer generated human. But AI is, is built to be as close to a human as possible as close to human thinking as possible, right? So when you saw iRobot, right, you know, with Will Smith, and you saw that, you know, those robots didn't have real brains. What they had was AI, artificial intelligence. It was fake, but they thought like real people. Um, When you play a video game and you're playing against a computer, that's essentially... AI, you know, the, those those enemies that are on the screen are programmed to think in the, you know, in a certain way. Um, and so that's what artificial intelligence is, right? And so what we do is uh, machine learning is, you know, almost like a baby cousin of artificial intelligence because artificial intelligence uses machine learning. Some some does, but some doesn't, right? But machine learning is like, hey, we're going to use human input to determine how this how this AI thinks. Right. So when you have general AI, it's more about, hey, I can program things. Right. And make this computer think a certain way. When you have machine learning, that process means that you now have a bunch of human decisions that are going to serve as the data for how this thing thinks. Um, And the reason why machine learning is important, especially for ABF Creative, what we're able to do is we're able to use machine listening, a form of AI, to know how our audience will react to certain things before we actually publish it. So we can use AI to determine, well, will black mothers ages 44 to 50 like the voice of this um, of this character for this podcast we're creating? We can push that and figure out even before we release it, if it's something that black women will respond to well. That gives us an advantage because now we're able to make better decisions in the production process. Um, That's the way we use AI and machine learning at ABF Creative. Wow. Like that is just, that sounds like so amazing because it makes me think about all the time 
and money you must save. Like, <laughs> just knowing that. Like, that's a lot of time and money save. How can I do that in my business? Like, you know, right. <laughs> in the everyday business, how are we doing that? But then also it makes me think, this is kind of like stalkerish, but in a good way. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, you know, it, it, it could be stalkerish. I mean, we, we also are planning to do our own studies to improve our predictive analytics because, you know, we have predictive analytics now, but we're going to do even more studies. Like, we're going to have studies that involve Black men, Black women, Hispanic men, Hispanic women, Indian men, Indian women, kids, adults, etc. We're going to be doing our own studies because what that's going to do is going to allow us to take that data like we talked about and then now we can use predictive analysis on all the other things that we're doing so machine learning is like I said you know it's all taking human uh, inputs and then developing intelligence based on that whereas regular artificial intelligence is really just sometimes just you know somebody behind a computer who program Um, you know so we're still using our audience to teach to teach us what they like and dislike. We're still going to be improving that over time. Love that, and that, and that's like um, in a that's I think it's very, of course, innovative. Um, but it speaks to the power of technology, and I love that you said that all the things, the data you're going to get into, because it it makes me think about ownership and the fact that now we know. Some of these, you know, statistics that are out here, they can sometimes be biased in who's creating those things. So it makes right. me feel good that, you know, we're, you're creating something for the communities, the specific communities, and we own those data points and those analytics. Right. We're, 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 we're definitely cognizant of that. Like I think what you what you hit on was very important. You know, we're working with uh, a company named Veritonic. Um, which, which, you know, is our technology partner with, you know, with our machine listening and machine learning. Um, and, you know, this data is really important. We want to own our data. Using this platform, we're able to collect data, own data, and use that to create content. That's our sole purpose is how do we leverage the data that we're collecting and, and learning from to, to create the content that our audience loves the best. And so, and that's the reason why we're working with brands too. So ABF doesn't just create our own podcast, but we also work with really, really exciting, interesting brands. And we, like I said, mentioned it. I can't mention the name yet, but we're really excited. Ooh, we just signed. I, I, I wish I could. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. But okay, we'll take a hint. The hint is ice cream. And so I won't say anything else. Okay. All I'll say is like one of the one of our favorite brands. We're, we're actually doing their podcast, and um, we're excited about it. And 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 we're using that same technology. We're using the same creative instincts that we've been using this whole time. So it's going to be very interesting to see what the outcome is. I must say, I feel even just so talking to you, I feel so proud um, the direction that you're going, and just to see how we as black people, we, we move the culture, we move the economy and the amazing things that you're doing. Um, I think is great. And this industry is like you said, it's few people I hear about that are in this industry. So that alone is why you're so unique. Um, but it also makes me think about the conversation I had prior with Michelle Dazon of the black on market and talking about how initially it was not, it was kind of like taboo to talk about specifically focusing on certain communities, especially the black community and the courage in doing that, but how it's paid off for you. So how do you feel like being so innovative? <laughs> I mean, you, you, you have no choice. Like, it, 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 you know, it goes back to what I was saying earlier, which is what makes you special? Mm-hmm. What makes you special? Like one of my quotes I used to use all the time during my fast startup days was don't reinvent the wheel, put rims on it. I used to say that all the time. And the reason why is because you don't, you don't, innovation is not 
this brand new thing that nobody has ever seen or heard before. Innovation is I put, I improved this thing that has been challenging or has been plain and boring for so long. Podcasts are not new. We're not the first to create podcasts. We're not the first to create black podcasts. You know that. Everybody knows that. This is a black podcast, right? Like everybody has been creating podcasts. We make great podcasts. What's going to make me different is what I bring to the table. And what I bring into the table is going to be, you know, that innovative production process called the story time framework. And then also the machine learning um, technology when it comes to content creation. That's what's going to make ABF different and special. So you just got to tap into what it is. And that's how I, that's how I be creative because I always come to the table figuring out what are my rims? You know, I'm not reinventing the wheel, but I need to find out what is going to be the thing that makes me shiny, the thing that makes me stand out, the thing that makes me special. So that's how you do it. I, I, I We definitely got to quote that. The, um, don't reinvent the wheel, put rims on it. So yes, <laughs> I love that. Well, Anthony, you know, people who are listening, they may not be in um, the industries of dealing with, you know, machine learning, but I think we can learn something from how you have been like an impact fanatic, but then also dialing in on those people who you serve, like your ideal client, your ideal community. So I want to talk about how, what advice you can give to someone who, to help them figure out who their ideal community or client is. And also, I guess we kind of did talk about it, but why it's important to nail that down. Um, I just think finding your ideal, just as a business, uh, you know, just knowing where you, where you, where your market is. The problem is, is that a lot of people, that's where their business usually lives or dies. Um, and in the startup world, they call it product market fit, right? Like, how do you find your product market fit, which is a fancy way of saying, who is your customer? <laughs> and are they paying for it? <laughs> so, you know, because you don't really know, your, you don't really have a customer. Like, a lot of people know who they want to talk to, but you don't have a customer until they pay for it in abundance, yeah, you got one person from the community that you're trying to attract to pay for. That's not enough to say you have product market fit. Product market fit is when you actually identify an abundance of people, a group for which you know you could continuously market to and continuously get business out of. That's when you found some semblance of success. Um, how do you find that? Honestly, um, I, there are books out there like Lean Startup that talks a lot about this. You know, business model generation is a classic that a lot of people talk about. Um, you know, you just got to continue to iterate and continue to test assumptions. Uh, you know when you found it, you know, but the goal is really just to get in front of those people, put the product in front of them and test it. That's it. Um you're going to lose money. I can't give you, I'm in my mind trying to figure out a way I can, can make it sound easier or cheaper, but it's no way to really make it sound easier, cheaper. Like you literally have to use your own resources to get in front of that audience and test it. Are there people who find the audience immediately and don't have to spend much money? Yes. Are you going to be one of those people? I can't promise you that. You know, some people, some people get lucky. Some people don't get it into their third or fourth try. You know, um, business, that's just the way business is. But the way that you, you make sure that you're, you're really hitting your, your, the nail on the head as far as like your audience is to continuously test, continuously, you know, do things and content. We talked about it earlier. So Content is, is almost like the, if I had to say there was a cheap way to find your audience, content would be it. Like, content would be it because you can build a community before the product is even there. That's what we did with Fat Startup. Before we had a conference, we had a, we was putting all these interviews online. Uh, we created consistent content. From that consistent content, we created an audience. 
from that audience, we were continuing to sell things to this audience they knew that they would like. We were selling notebooks. We were selling T-shirts. We were selling tickets to conferences. So when you've built a community, that community, you know, you have so many chances to try new things. So if I had to give any advice on that is to maybe try and build a community first. And that's a little bit cheaper than actually developing a whole ass product uh, and then to find out that nobody wants it. So that's what I would say. Black to, black to business is a community. Right? Yeah, so, yes. yes. So you can sell things to this community because you know what your audience would like or what would respond to. So you can, but even if they didn't like it, Let's just hypothetically say you made something and your audience is like, mm, I ain't really rocking with that. Well, you got the community, so that means you can try again with something else. Right. So you well, find that yeah, but you've been, I mean, you and I both have been in this for a while and, you know, people who primarily listen are probably those who are first starting out. And when you look at social media, you see all these things. Everybody doesn't have that mindset to be in it for the long run or they're just trying to figure out how to do it for the long run. So I one want you to talk about your experience in that. But then also, like you mentioned, putting up your own money, like sometimes you got (laughs) to put money to make money. And yeah, I mean, everybody's not meant to be an entrepreneur. Talk about. I think, you know. I, I think, you know, sometimes we get caught up in the in, 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 in the love affair of Instagram and, and seeing those images of entrepreneurs living a life of freedom and carefreeness and money and all these different things. And we're in love with that. And we want that. And so we think being an entrepreneur will give us that. Um, will it give you that? I'm not going to lie. Yeah. It can. Um, but don't think that those people that you're looking at didn't work their ass off to get those things. <laughs> don't think that the they didn't have sleepless nights. Don't think that they didn't have, you know, anxiety every day they woke up. And don't think that they woke up with no anxiety at all. Just because you look at a picture, don't mean you know all the story behind it. You don't know what happens once the snap is over. Right? And so... I just think that there's a lot of assumption about about the entrepreneur lifestyle. Um, good, bad, and indifferent. And so you can get a good job and still, you know, save and do things and enjoy yourself and live a life of freedom and be happy. A good job can still deliver that to you. You can work at a startup even that can give you that same you know, thrill that being an entrepreneur can give you. Because I'll tell you right now, everybody on my team is feeling it like I'm feeling it. (laughs) I can promise you that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I might have a little bit more pressure, but, you know, don't don't think for one second they ain't got that pressure, that, you know, um, you know, you know, risk that they're taking as well by, you know, dialing into what we're trying to build. So, you know, Maybe you can do it that way. Find a startup to be part of. Uh, But not everybody's meant to be an entrepreneur. Um, And so I think for me, what's kept me in the game as long as I've been in it, it's really just that hunger. Like, I just feel like I'm built for this. I'm made for this. Um, I'm always like challenges. I want to solve challenges. I I want freedom. I want those things bad enough. And I'm hungry enough for those things that... I'm willing to try, try, try again. You know, a lot of people might look at, there are a lot of people who did who don't know me from the fast startup days. There's a lot of people who don't know me from those days. And they may look at things that I'm doing today and say, oh, wow, like you got this, you did this. And they may think like, uh, it's overnight success. But meanwhile, the connections that I'm able to make today are literally seeds that I planted back when I was doing fast startup. Like you didn't see that. You know, you weren't there then. You don't know what I had to go through. I was in the hospital for panic attacks and anxiety. I was in, like, people don't know those things. And so, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a long journey and it looks like overnight success, but you don't know their story. 
you don't know what it is. And so, you know, if you're not built for that, if you're not built for this, then I would say stay far away because it's not rational. It's not a, it's not a smart decision. You know, Steve Jobs said it. If you think about being an entrepreneur, you're nuts. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, that's, that's just what it is. So. I agree. I think it is a certain type of, you know, it is a certain type of insanity. Um, but yeah, I agree. I, I definitely can relate to what you're saying in terms of your team is feeling it. And I love the transparency because I think about when one of um, I focused on building my team really this year. And one of the girls, the young ladies was saying she was like in the beginning, she's like, oh, yeah, I wake up and it doesn't feel like work. Like last month we were getting in on these podcasts. She's like, oh, it feels like work now. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so it's like you feel it. You yeah. are feeling it. So I think that and it's a part of leadership is to be transparent, but also we have right. to have these conversations. Um, right. Yeah, every day it's in sunshine and rain. And and what Anthony is saying is we're encouraging you. We're not trying to discourage you, but we're trying to let you know <laughs> what you signed up for and that's why you're listening to this. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you're listening to this podcast. So it, you are made for this and you know it's going to take the work and the commitment. Right. So yes. Um, and I also want to talk about those who may, like you have built something um, that is very large and it's making an impact. So, and I know it's taking you some time to get there, but speaking to those small business owners who are feeling like they're competing with these larger companies. Um, how has that been for you and what advice had, do you have for people who are comparing, especially when it comes to these large tech companies? Are you saying like what, what, like as far as competing with them? Yes. Yeah, like the mindset around competing, knowing that like we, what you talked about earlier is that you're going to get there. Um, right. But how do you deal with that? Right. Um, Man, oh man. It goes back to that what makes you special argument that I was making. Um, long as you know what, what makes you special, just keep tapping into that and be consistent. I think, you know, they are way larger. Like I'm the I'm a very small player in the podcast space. Not for long though, they're gonna get large. Right. But I'm a at this at this moment, you know, you know, you have the wonderies of the world, gimlets. I Heart Media's Odysseys, Pineapple Streets, um, Jar Audio, Q Code. There's so many, you know, podcast studios out there, um, production companies out there who are raising million, millions of dollars. By the way, might I add? Um, and what's going to make us special is that folk that focus on multicultural and that focus on um, machine learning and data driven, that combination itself makes us different, makes us special. I'm going to continue to tap into that because I know that the quality of work that we're putting out is high end. And I know that the, those, those elements that I just named is going to make, continue to separate us from everyone else. That's all I'm focused on. And being focused on that is what's going to continue to make me stand alone and continue to make me valuable to investors and, potential acquisitions and potential deals. We just signed a deal with ICM, um, ICM Partners, um, which was just announced a few days ago. Um, ICM is, you know, one of the largest agencies in in the world, you know, Mm -hmm. and and now, you know, they, they were able to only, you know, and they, they already had business with so many other podcast networks. They got, we're not the first and only um, podcast network that they, that they're working with. Uh, but they decided to work with us because of that specialty, because of that thing that separated me. Because why would they need another? They wouldn't need another. You know what I mean? Like they already work with so many others. The reason why they felt the need to work with us is because of what I, I dialed in and doubled down on what made us special. Uh, and so I'm going to continue to, you know, really just hammer that home. Find your, your unique advantage and exploit it. Love that. And I, I definitely, before we head out, I got to talk actually about, um, so you're creating to sell, to be acquired? No. Okay. Um, you know, I, I, I'm i okay if the price is high enough, sure. <laughs> got your price is right. But we want to be around for a very, 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 very long time. 
Um, but we're open to it because, you know, there, there have been talks, there's, there have been approaches. And, you know, if there's ever a number that's, that's high enough where I know that, you know, it would benefit um, my team, then, you know, that'll be something we'll discuss and, and I'll make that decision. But, you know, I'm only saying that because, um, you know, I want us to think big and I want us to think, I want us to think about what it means to be a black face to be behind these millions of dollar acquisitions out there in the world or these millions, you know, million dollar IPOs, billion dollar IPOs out there in the world. We're starting to see it in the venture capital world. You see all these different VCs raising these hundred million plus funds. That makes me feel really good because I remember back when we were trying to get this thing started with tech and weight and all of that, 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 that would be, that would have been a dream to see those things and say, now it's a reality. So let's do it on the business side now. Now we're seeing, you know, a lot of VCs do it. Now we need a lot of black entrepreneurs to continue to do it. We're seeing some semblance of it. You know, I saw Squire had raised a Series A um, yeah. fairly large. Um, Resilia, which is headed by Savichi Wilson, um, is, is also a company that's doing really, really excellent. Um, and um, Popcom, you know, Dawn Dixon. Um, which is another company that's doing fairly well. So let's continue to see black faces doing really, really, really well in the millions, if not billions of dollars in either IPOs, acquisitions, or just revenue. Uh, and I want to continue to see that. And I want to put myself in that ring too. I want, I, you know, I aspire for us to really make that impact, but I don't want the numbers just, just to have the numbers. I want it because the impact we're creating. I want people to really say, yo, ABF is on fire. The right. they're making is hot. It's fire. Like they're all worth it. Like, yeah. So I don't want I don't want clout for clout's sake. I want to really make impact. Um, you know, I really want to make impact. And I want the the impact to be visible only because if you're not if you're not out there and they're not seeing black faces, how are you gonna inspire the next person to come up and do the same thing? So, we, we, you know, there was there was something about seeing black enterprise and seeing I used to want black enterprise. I wanted to be subscribed to black enterprise because I wanted to see successful black people on covers. For that, because I just wanted to be inspired. We don't see enough of that. We just don't. Yeah. And I, and I don't nothing to take away from celebrities. I love these celebrities who are being great business minds. But why can't regular black entrepreneurs who are killing it make the covers too? Yes, I agree. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, like I, I, I salute Kevin Hart being on the cover of Entrepreneur. That's great. But when are we going to see, you know, Savitri Wilson on the cover right. of Entrepreneur Magazine? Let's see that. Let's make that happen. That is so real. And I, I think it, all those names you mentioned, I think what one of the things I'm glad you mentioned that because we mostly talk about, you know, providing professional services here at Black to Business. And I really think about, you know, if you don't get funded, would you still do your business? Would you still create your business? And what are some non-traditional ways to get funding? Um and I know that you mentioned with your first business or your earlier businesses, you all created content and then you got some of those partnerships. Um, any advice on funding and traditional or non-traditional in your experience? Uh, I mean, definitely explore. I would say definitely explore like the different um, avenues. You know, obviously there's angel investments, there's venture capital, there's um, crowdfunding which is uh, becoming a lot more popular now. Um, you know, I would say Dawn Dixon and Angela Benton are great examples of people who are getting a lot of success with crowdfunding. So they, and, and I think they're even creating content, um, showing people how to do it themselves, if I'm not mistaken. I will really tap into them and see what they, you know, content they developed on that front. Um, so... I, 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 those are the different ways. I mean, this would be a long podcast if I, if I dive deep into each of them. But you know, find out what's best for you. You know, venture and then find and really find out. Don't don't get pulled into venture capital just because you see it's in the millions of dollars and think that well, that's the biggest way I can go. Like, find out if you're really doing because you got to understand what the 
implications of getting, you know, venture capital is I think a lot of people don't understand like you're giving up pieces of your business. Like I don't think a lot of people think about that. Like they think that they're going to have full control. Like you got to look at board seats. You might have to give people board seats and some people don't like that. They don't job with that, but yet you want to raise $30 million. What do you think comes with that? <laughs> like that's not free money. Like that, that, that comes with, you know, a lot more than what you think. Um, and so just really figure out what it is that you want and, you know, go that way. But also, you know, revenue is king. Cash is king. So if you have, if you create a business where you're making money, you know, you'll never have to worry about funding. So um, usually, you know, that comes with building a community first too. Um, yeah, man, this is a long time. Like I got so many things I can say. With this. I know. I was like, okay. <laughs> but well, just do your homework and get mentorship. Don't be afraid to email people on LinkedIn, shoot your shots. Don't come off salesy, ask questions. You'd be surprised when they give you like a decent answer. Even if it's like a two sentence, three sentence answer, you can, you can finesse that into a longer conversation later. But, you know, really shoot your shot, get the answers, read books. I know everybody's on YouTube these days. You know, listen, go to Amazon, find some books and, and sit down and really just consume as much information that'll make you a smarter person as possible. Yes, totally agree. And speaking of books, um, any books that you have been helpful for you in your journey that you can recommend? Um, man, I love the book. The obstacle is the way. Okay. The obstacle is the way I would recommend that everyone read the book. The obstacle is the way it's all about stoic philosophy. Um, but I just think it has like, a message that every entrepreneur should absorb, you know, in taking challenges head on and finding success through the challenge, but not going around it. And I think that, you know, that's a mindset that will make you bulletproof. I love it. And I'll be sure to mention those and any resources um, that have or tools or resources that have been very great that you can't live without as a business. Tools or resources I can't live without. Um, well, since I talked about reading books, I'm going to definitely say the Kindle. I think the Kindle is a gem. Like I just got a Kindle, I think like maybe late last year or early, earlier this year. Um, and it's been a, a lifesaver because at night, I don't like to have the phone near me, mm -hmm. you know, at night. I like to kind of like separate the phone from me. And so the Kindle kind of forces me to read books. And the Kindle is great because you don't, it don't do nothing but that. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's all I do. You can do nothing on the Kindle but read books. You can't, you can't browse it in that real quick. You can't check an email. You can't do nothing but read books. Um, so the Kindle has been a lifesaver and don't get the Kindle on your, don't get the Kindle app on your phone. Those are two different things. Mm, okay. I'm not talking about the Kindle app because you can easily leave that app and go check an email or social media. No, you need the actual Kindle device. That's what I'm talking about. Um, so to me, that's been um, a lifesaver. And then also my Bluetooth headphones, like my Sony XM4s. Yo, I can't, you know, there's nothing I can't do. Like, I really need those. Like, those things are like, you know, they're, they're, they've been a lifesaver. They've been they've been attached at my hip since I bought them. So. <laughs> you don't like the Q-tips? The um, I call them the Q-tips, the Apple ones. I like the both ones. <laughs> the Q-tips. <laughs> you don't like the Q-tips? No. Um, I don't. I like over-the-ear. Yeah. Immersion. Into sound and the Sony XM4s are my perfect over the air immersion. Like I use them when I'm chilling or I'm in bed, when I'm meditating, when I'm jogging, working out. Like, yo, they so versatile. They everything to me. Like, so we need a sponsor for them. I do, low key. Yeah, I use them. You <laughs> so. just sold it. I'm going to link it in the, the show notes, everyone. Because <laughs> he, just, he just sold it for them. But yes. Right. And 
And um, so, Anthony, before we hop off, I want to ask you, what does it mean to you to be black in business? Oh, man, to be black in business means to create a legacy. Mm. You know, because being black in business, that's what it's always used to be about. Um, when you had a black business, you were able to pass it down back in the day to your to your youngins, to your family. Um, you were able to make history in certain ways. You were able to do so much. Black businesses held was was hold, held in certain some high regard. And so, to be black in business is a responsibility. Yeah. You're responsible. You're responsible for legacy. So that's what it means to me to to be black in business. Love it. And so my final question is, if someone, if I was a business owner wanting to work with you, how could I do that? And where could I connect with you? Um, Hit me up in my email, anthony at absc.co or just, you know, follow me on social media, Twitter, Anthony Frazier, Instagram, Anthony Frazier. I'm pretty easy to find. Um, I'm slow on social, though. I just told y'all, I'll be on my <laughs> pendo. So you DM me and it don't get hit up for like three, four days. Y'all, I warned you. Like, I just be slow on social media like that. And that's intentional, by the way. That's intentional. I'm not even going to, I mean, I'm not, I'm not apologetic about it at all. Like, I really do try to separate myself from things like that because those things can be, become distractions. So. Love it. Well, this has been an amazing conversation. I really appreciate it. And I, I, I wanted to mention that Anthony was also, we finished our uh, Men Who Lead series in June, but um, he was also on our panel for our first Men Who Lead in partnership with Verizon. So we're excited to have you back um, working with us and we wish you all the best, but thank you for being here. Ah, no problem. Thank you. And I can't wait to come back. For some yes. interesting updates. Yes, thank you. So until next time. We have touched on so many issues and explored ideas for your business development. And I hope you found this information worthwhile and you can tailor it to fit your business. What stood out for me is that there are so many creative ways that technology, despite how complicated it can be, can be utilized to help you create relatability and how to stand out in a pool of competition. Additionally, Anthony reminds us of the importance of diversity and being innovative with how you interact with your audience. Through media and content creation, you can reach a wide market and all you need is consistency and not being afraid to keep learning and educating yourself about your industry. Whether you're a small or big business, you need to constantly learn the changing world of technology and find ways to integrate your business vision and goals with them. You don't want to be left behind and blind. Keep transforming and staying inventive. Thank you so much for listening and be sure to check out blacktobusiness.com forward slash 58 for complete show notes and resources mentioned during this episode. We would also be so grateful if you could rate and review this episode in our show to let us know how helpful this has been for you. Until next time.